Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Ron McKinney with Pate Da. Um, we're having our next seminar. This one I'm really excited about. We have Drew and Bethany here from, uh, Bethany's from the Scottish Ballet. Drew, of course, is a dance photographer in the UK. I'm going to have them introduce themselves a little bit in more depth in just a moment. Um, but they're going to be talking about a photographer working with the muse and where it can go from there. And, and um, so I'm excited to hear about that. So I'm going to turn things over to Drew now. And Drew, it's all you. Great. Thanks, Ron. And thank you so much for uh, asking us to do this. This is really exciting. Um, this is my first kind of leading a webinar on Zoom. So if there are any technical issues, um, just uh, be patient. <laughs> okay, so I'm sharing my presentation now. So Ron and Beth, can you start? Well, actually, before you get started, can you go off of that, please? Oh, sure. Because I just want to let everybody see Beth and uh, have her uh, introduce herself to everyone. So, Beth, if you can join in and... Hello, good morning, um, everyone. And thank you for having me. This is wonderful to be able to talk about our story. And um, it is a story now because it's been a few years. And I'm very excited to answer your questions and also to see what Drew has put together with the slides. It will be memory lane for me. So, yeah, thank you. Good. Over thank you. you. Glad to have you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll get started. Okie dokie. Okay. So, can you guys see that okay? Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, and I'm sorry. One more thing I want to tell everybody. I, I always oh, forget. It's such a tease. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I want to be sure that everybody knows to, like, if you have any questions or if you want to make a comment, to do it in the chat box. And uh, Drew will be able to watch it from there and bring up everything that you're saying. So go ahead again. Great. Okay. So hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar on creative collaboration uh, and finding your muse. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Drew Forsyth. Um, I'm a commercial and advertising photographer and I specialize in dance and movement. Uh, I've been shooting for close to 15 years now um, and I've been full time for about seven or eight, I think. And all the years kind of blend into one after a while. <laughs> um, and I've been very fortunate in that time to work with some amazing individuals in amazing places around the globe, including, I think some of you might recognize this, this is from Arizona earlier this year. So this was when I attended Padada. So um, that was great, really enjoyed that. Uh, and that's from Los Angeles as well. Uh, okay, so I'm coming to you from Manchester here in the UK and joining me is my creative collaborator, Bethany Kingsagana. I'll just talk about Beth for a moment, even though she did. Do a little intro. Um, Beth, was, Beth is a principal artist with Scottish Ballet, performs across the UK and around the world uh, in the most prestigious theatres on earth, including the Marinsky Theatre, Grand Opera House Beijing. And where is this in this photo, Beth? Um, that is Edinburgh, so that is Scotland. Great, so home turf. Uh, so yeah, Bethany trained the Royal Ballet Schools from age 11 graduated with honours in 2007 after winning the Wire Draw Company Leavers Prize, the April Ulrich Award for Most Dynamic Performer and First Commendation in Young Dancer of the Year. Uh, joined Scottish Ballet in 2007. She's promoted to soloist and then principal. And as well, you're actively involved in dance education, teaching and guest coaching. And you've got awards, you're up to your eyes in awards. <laughs> and you were regularly requested to present to audiences and you did some stuff for BBC Young Dancer and, which the thing that I think is most impressive, you've performed for the Queen, right? I have done. Actually, the Queen's birthday a long time ago and as a student and then um, yeah, previously when we have done various um, performances in London. Very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. Uh, I've never met the Queen, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, still plenty of time. 
Right, so uh, I actually made a note about questions. Um, but yeah, as I say, Ron, if you want to interject, that's absolutely fine. Happy to take questions throughout. Um, if a question is asked that is a, happens to be a particularly long question or I think deserves like a longer answer, I might save that to the end. And I was going to say, Beth and I are happy to stick around at the end as well um, to answer any questions that you guys might have. Mm. Right then, let's get cracking. So, creative collaboration and finding your muse, taking your work to the next level. That's what we're talking about today. Um, so, actually, what are we going to speak about? Well, the talk is in kind of two halves, I would say, in the first half. Um, it's talking about general overview of uh, Beth and I's relationship and how that started. Um, and then specifically why I wanted to work with Beth. Um, then a little bit about our working relationship, the personal creative projects we've uh, worked on. I'm actually not going to talk about all of them because there's way too many, but I'll kind of focus on the, the ones that I like the most <laughs> and that were most pivotal, I think. Um, let's see, commercial and paid projects we've worked on the differences between working on a commercial project and a paid project, and then uh, what's coming next. So that's uh, part one. And then in part two, um, there's not really halves, they're kind of just, you know, it's an arbitrary delineation really. But like uh, in the second half, we'll be looking in depth at how you can do something about this yourself, um, specifically like why you would want to do this, um, what to look for in a, create, in a creative partnership, foundations of a good working relationship, how to approach dancers, which is, a, I could do an hour talk on that alone, I think. Uh, and then a few top tips. There isn't a snappy uh, title for those. Um, and then, yeah, I think Beth's insight throughout all of this is gonna be really, really valuable because you'll get to hear a lot of this stuff from the other side. Uh, okay, let's get started. Okay, here we go. I thought I'd put this one in, Beth, because I really like this photo of the two of us. Um, so, I do a lot of talks to photographer groups here in the UK, and often for those talks, I have to look back at my career and I try and have uh, I have to try to find pivotal moments at which I can look back on and I think, oh, that was the moment when I kind of when everything changed. Um, and I've got a few of those. I've got um, attending the workshop. Uh, Lois Greenfield's dance photography workshop, which I did in 2014. That was a pivotal moment in my career, I think. Traveling to Arizona for Pas de Deux, which I loved doing, and meeting Beth, I would put up there. Um, so let's see. I'm going to take us back to 2016. This is the kind of work I was making there. Um, at that time, I've been freelancing for about Four or five years, I would say. I bought Jordan Matter's book, Dancers Among Us. And that was like a really, uh, like, that was a huge influence on me at the time. And I actually, around that time, I actually went to New York and I hung out with Jordan for a day. So it was actually amazing meeting him again this earlier this year. Um, so yeah, I'd been working with kind of students or pre-professional dancers. And it was around that time that I, um, kind of was actively looking for new people to work with who um, were kind of a, a, at a higher level really. And I wanted to, I wanted to branch out. Um, and so it was around that time that I saw uh, Scottish Ballet announce that they had promoted Bethany to principal. Um, and Scottish had tagged Beth's social channels in those tweets. So I followed her and over the next few months kind of watched photos and you know how you see things that people post online and uh, you interact with people a little bit. And anyway, I was in the office one day, a few months later, and I was just said to one of my friends, like, can you imagine what it would be like, you know, to go from shooting student to shooting a, a principal dancer from st such a prestigious company? And my friend said, well, you should just message her. And so, uh, and so I did. And so I sent her a tweet here. And to my horror, she replied. <laughs> um, and I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and before I knew it, we were arranging to do a shoot together. Um, now, let's see, Beth. Yeah, that's right. I was gonna, 
speak a little bit more about this in the second half, but maybe you could tell us a little about the initial interaction that we had, because presumably you get messages like this all the time, or you get offers to work on projects or whatever. So I don't know what kind of made this different. So I think also it's timing with where you are in, um, especially for my career, it was a point that I was also developing and wanting to branch out. So this was also um, a kind of a perfect collaborating time. As you can see from these, um, the first message, it's all going back to the company. I need to make sure and agree. So in a way that the collaboration could only go ahead if um, it had been okay from my, from my company. When you're putting your face to something and um, you're, you're giving some personal space, you have to make sure, especially um, of the only national ballet company in Scotland, that you're working with the right people. So going on from that, I could see um, my own personal view of Drew's work, and it was something that I loved the, um, the outdoors. I'm quite hardy, so I kind of wanted to push myself for the elements as well, and um, also worked so hard on um, my body, my, um, my look, and it was something that I wanted to be able to put my trust in someone to show it in the, the light that I wanted it to be seen, not um, something that I didn't feel comfortable with. So the fact that it was a, a message first and all very professional really um, excited me on that. Great, that's good. I've never actually heard that, so that's <laughs> great. Okay, awesome. Um, Okie dokie. So. Um, moving on from that. Hey, hey Drew, uh, Drew, can yeah. I jump in for just a sec? Sure. Beth, do you, do you get hit up quite a bit, you know, with messages like that? And how does that, how, how do you treat them? So early on, um, it, a message, I everything goes through the company. Um, now I think they just get so bogged down. That I, I have um, a feeling if something's going to work or not work. So I, I kind of get a vibe already just from always looking back at their past images or if they're wanting to start something new then I also take that into consideration as well because you know you can't um, always judge someone's work just from um, from a picture always so I think that's very important to know um, so with sometimes a lot of um, people would just love to have um, yeah, to have the opportunity to photograph. And I do really respect that, but you have to also be exclusive to some people. Otherwise I lose my presence as a principal dancer. And now this is great that we're in a position that we can advise people because we, we're at um, a point where we have reached high levels of success. So um, yeah, that's mine. Okay, thanks. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, over the past kind of four years, Beth and I have worked together nearly a dozen times, I think. And in that time, kind of photographed ba ba Beth backstage at shows, in studios at Scottish Ballet and in the Highlands of Scotland. Um, and I think one of the things that I think of when I think about our working relationship is that it's very, ambitious I would say um, and I think we both really want to try out new things we really want to push the boundaries of what we're both capable of um, and the other thing I realized as well is that all of our work that we've every single project is just so varied and it's own it's its own kind of distinct package which I which I really like so so yeah yeah, you said something there that I wanted to pick up on, but I, it's gone out of my head. Damn. Okay, right. So if uh, I take us back to that first shoot that we did together, um, this is Arthur's seat just outside Edinburgh. And you can actually see Edinburgh over there on the left. That's Kelton Hill, if you're familiar with Edinburgh. Um, so, yeah. We went back and forth a little bit uh, via DM, then by email, and then... Um, we had a couple of calls, I think, and we agreed a concept. And that was basically that I wanted to shoot Beth overlooking Edinburgh with the city as the backdrop for these dance portraits. 
Um, Beth kind of touched upon that actually just then. Um, when you're shooting with someone like her, you can't just agree a time and a place and go, okay, well, there we go. There's like plenty of hoops to jump through. And it's not least is finding the time. I, I don't think I fully appreciated just how busy someone like Beth really is. You know, I think, you know, I think, oh yeah, I'm pretty busy, but Beth is busy. <laughs> like, I mean, we were in the lead up to Christmas when we were talking about all this stuff. Um, and so it transpired that the only day we were able to actually shoot was the 2nd of January in Edinburgh, uh, which was very cold. <laughs> um, Beth, to give, can you give people an idea of what a normal, because you're right in the, in the eye of the storm there in kind of Christmas time. What, what, what does a kind of normal day look like? So for the Christmas season, well, I guess we call it winter season because um, we, we carry on until February and touring. Mm. We do nine, eight to nine shows a week. And um, we also have a show on Sunday. So we just have a Monday off. So I had to pick a day that was actually you know, a, a holiday day um, to work with Drew. And now thinking about it, it is crazy that we chose one of the coldest times to walk up off the seat and to strip yeah. into a leotard. But I guess that was the start of our collaboration. We were ballsy and we were brave and um, we went for it. So Yeah, I mean, and that really kind of did set the tone for the rest of our shoots, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Right. All oh, right, this is <laughs> this is a short video that I took. We don't hear hear you talking there, but it looks pretty windy. <laughs> I think you do get the sense of uh, <laughs> what it was like. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, it was. It was very. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was insanely windy. I don't know how I managed to put to ask you to do that. Oh, here we go. This is just in a little clip as well, just to give you a sense of the location that we were at. There we go. Pretty gorgeous, right? Oh man, Scotland's so beautiful. Right. Um, so once we'd kind of decided the concept, blocked out the whole day, get to Edinburgh at 9:30 in the morning, Beth's there at the station, jump in a taxi make our way to Arthur's seat. Um, and then these are the, Im I'm just gonna go straight to the images. So this is the, the ones that we ended up with. Um, funny story, we, we were shooting uh, for, mo for a good chunk of the morning and you know, the shots were fine. They were fine, but they weren't kind of like amazing. Like they didn't leap out at me as, you know, really excellent shots. So we went, back down the mountain and had some lunch. And then we basically decided, okay, well, why don't we just go up and give it one more go? So we went up um, and it was just as the sun was setting and we had about 15 minutes of this gorgeous light and it could only have been about uh, two or three degrees. What's that in America? Like 35? 35, yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very, 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 very cold. Um, and these are some of the images that we managed to get in that time. And literally everything else from the shoot from has never seen the light of day. <laughs> like we just threw away everything else because it, you know, these were just so striking, I think. And these are, these are still some of my favorite shots. Um, and then this particular image, uh, I really like. So that's Edinburgh in the background, obviously. And you can just see on the left-hand side, that's the Scottish Parliament building. Um, and then this image was actually picked up by the Edinburgh Evening News as well. So even, even though we hadn't really kind of promoted it that much, the, 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 the Edinburgh News picked it up and that was really nice. And as well, the other thing that happened is that one of Beth's kind of sponsors got in touch and asked if they could use the image to put on coffee, like labels, if that makes sense. And there they are, there's some of the uh, coffee labels. So um, <laughs> there we go, all that just came from one kind of random uh, DM. So that was our first project that we worked on together. Maybe about a year later, Beth Drew, Tommy, Drew, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Do you have anything that you would like to ask? Well, you're getting some questions over there in the chat. Oh. If you have it open Should up. I? How do I? Well, you have to like take it down from the full view. Oh, here we and, go. And when you take it off of the full view, then you'll see the uh, chats come up. But I can ask you. I can just tell you. The first question is from Sam. He's uh, 
wondering if you guys um, leaked this to the news, I guess, in the way for that new, that picture to be picked up. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't as uh, kind of cloak and dagger as that, but yeah, pretty much. We just sent it around to a few people to see if anyone was interested in picking it up. And, yep. yeah. and, and then Steve is asking what kind of lighting you used for that shoot. It's all natural. That's just sunlight. Like, you know, what can I say? That I, I, don't get me wrong, I still had all my stuff. <laughs> still brought everything and humped it all the way up the, to the top of the mountain. But uh, in the end, yeah, it was all just natural light. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. There we go. I can see the questions now. Great. Okay. Uh, Okie dokie. Right, perfect. So, um, let's move on. Uh, da, 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 where are my notes? Oh, yes. So, Beth told me she was heading down to Manchester. She's going to perform in a showcase of dance. And would I like to shoot something? Now, at, at this point, I've done a lot of behind the scenes and backstage stuff now. But at the time, I'd never really done anything like that. And if I think about, like, my heroes i really want to include this one so i didn't take this obviously um but this is cecil beaton's photograph photographing margot fontaine and if i look at this photo like cecil beaton's one of my photography heroes and you know to get this opportunity and think oh this is great look at look at the footsteps i'm walking in so anyway i get get over to salford and uh i get into the theater um and yeah i, I just wanted to share some of these images because you know, one of the, I'm going to talk about this a lot later, but like one of the foundations of like a great creative relationship, especially when you're shooting uh, documentary images is trust. And like having that kind of level of intimacy with someone is just like absolutely amazing. So this is like in the dressing room. And is it, is it Mary that's doing your corset up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what I love about this picture, I mean, this was probably 15 minutes before I step on as the Sugar Plum Fairy. So just for me i can tell personally the tension i have maybe in the face the thought process going in um and all those things people don't get to see that unless you have a, a trusting person to be with you for those moments so they are lost or um forgotten about so that's why pictures like this i absolutely love because um, it's the kind of showcase of on stage and off stage and the moments which are which are priceless. Well, there we go. And speaking of moments that are priceless, this one's may, might be my favourite one I've ever taken of you. So this is about. I think this is a gap in between. So you went on dance and then came off, and you had about a little bit of like thirty seconds before you went back on stage. I think, and then so that one I really like. But then I also like this one as well. <laughs> That was after. <laughs> yeah, that's after. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to speak uh, more in depth about the characteristics of a great working relationship uh, slightly later. But one thing I really want to touch on, obviously, I already said this, <laughs> is trust. And your subject has to trust you absolutely and not feel like they're going to be misrepresented or embarrassed later on. Um, and like, uh, part of that trust is now even just built into our process. So like Beth, trust that she'll be able to look over the images before they go anywhere and we can have longer conversations about what to include and what not to include um and if Beth really really doesn't like an image like there's an opportunity there for me to like defend it and go oh no actually we should use it for xyz um what, what i would say one caveat to that is that it is that um when it comes to technical things like you, I don't really have a choice. <laughs> like, uh, you know, if Beth's not turned out enough or, you know, whatever, then it's a hard, it's a hard no. So uh, that is one thing that you have to get used to. Sometimes you look, as a, as a dance photographer, you look at an image and go, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to print this huge and it's going to, this is going to be on my website. And then the dancer will be like, uh, no, delete. <laughs> and then that's that. Um, so there we go. There's, there's some images that I'm really proud of in the, um, and I'm going to post these, I promise. Um, Okie dokie. So final personal project I want to speak about is power. So in 2018, I was approached to do a, do a show in Liverpool of uh, some of my work. And the, work, the, the kind of umbrella theme for the show was positions of power. So, excuse me, travelled up to Scotland and made these with Beth um, 
yeah, I don't really want to speak about like my own kind of creative process too much. But what I would say is that like one thing I have with ballet is that sometimes it's presented in a very kind of feminine and delicate way. Whereas my experience of ballet is, is not that at all. Like it's athletic and it's powerful and, uh, the 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 performers are like uh it's it's like a sport do you know what i mean and so like with these images i wanted to show like just how incredible a dancer's body really is and so like yeah like on the one on the left you can see like beth's stomach and then her back and yeah yeah so that's that was basically the the thrust behind it um so anyway I showed the images went down really well got a little bit of local press then i got back to manchester and I had an email from a, from a client of mine, a commercial client, who basically sent me this screenshot of uh, uh, a building that had lots of images across it. Um, and he basically said to me, I've got a building, you know, can you come and cover it with some artwork? And I said, yes. And he said, great, you've got two weeks, find a project and do it. And I just thought this was, perfect um so this is the building that we were given so it was kind of up for renovation and my clients the my client's an interior designer so they had basically been given the the tender or whatever to redo this building and for eight months they wanted something on the in the windows that would look nice so we got to work 64 windows 64 <laughs> prints the first one took us uh i would i think it took five people 25 minutes for the first one and then for the last one uh i could do it on my own in eight <laughs> that was kind of we got so good at it by then we got the process so that's what it looked like from the outside putting it up um and this is what it's like from the inside actually uh yeah oh yeah and there's like a tiny little video here I won't make you watch the whole thing, but you can, I don't know if you can see that, but they are all slowly going in across the windows. This is the, this was a hard project. And I really, I just asked, I put a shout out on Facebook and asked my friends and I said, Hey, please, <laughs> I need your help. I cannot do this on my own. So yeah, we got a little bit of sponsorship and there we go. What was it like seeing you, seeing yourself <laughs> across the side of a building there? Um, it was great. I never actually got to see it in person, so it was nice that you managed to take all the um, all the pictures and videos. But it just worked so well because the original shoot is in a window, so the fact yeah. that um, and even that that kind of the the message that we we were showing from that kind of looking in and looking out was perfect for the building. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to kind of show as well is that oh here we go here it's here um was yeah like i wanted to put ballet right in the middle of a city <laughs> do you know what i mean and like show the world a little bit so the idea as well is that it's a rehearsal so like it's a series of repeated movements over and over again there's seven shots in there so uh so yeah um we, we do have a couple of questions that were actually cool. related to your previous um you know, when you were backstage with Beth. Yes. Um, the first one is Andrew's asking if there's a mutual creative project for the both of you, or does a company provide some payment when you work with her for something like that? So for something like that, I just did that because I wanted to. So there wasn't any kind of uh, financial recompense for that. But what I, what I would say is that that has then translated into paid work but from other companies so other companies have seen those images and said oh you know here's x amount of money go into the direct go just go do it <laughs> so that that's been nice so but so yeah and, and then the, another question from Catherine is uh, what was the process of being able to go back there did you approach the company um i can answer that one yeah sure and um, so for something like that, I knew I was going to be down in um, close to where Drew is. And just from our first collaboration, the, the company loved the work. So for me, that 
gives me such a reassurance that I'll be able to work with him again and that I also wanted to, for him to see that side of my performance because I think then that will work better on for collaboration so to see um, not just the finished product all the time to see the, the kind of more intimate backstage is something that then builds on our pictures to come which is um, you can see that so I asked the company if it was possible for um, Drew to come and take some backstage pictures and um, that has to go through all the right channels so even security of the theatre making sure they know an extra person is in and um, and from then, every single picture that Drew takes has to go through to be approved. Um, and then you get the, the final product. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Okie dokie. Um, so yeah, so that's a very brief overview of our personal projects. Um, but I, yeah, kind of following on from what that person was asking about money. <laughs> money's not a dirty word um yeah i wanted to talk a little bit about like how do you turn that personal creative relationship into a commercial venture with the company um or with any with you know third parties um so i'm yeah i can go into that a little bit um because i was working with beth quite a bit i was in fairly regular contact with the team at scottish ballet and kind of tagging them on social and they wanted to use the images like for stuff like this. So this is something we shot in the summer of 2017. So this is our second shoot together. Like, and obviously the company really like it. So, you know, we kind of over time, you begin to build this relationship with the team. And that eventually led to me being asked to come in and shoot behind the scenes on the company's uh, kind of season photo shoot, if that makes sense. So I was shooting behind the scenes of their shoot. Um, so I was up in Glasgow for two days, um, shooting behind the scenes, getting ready, technical execution of the shoot, you know, all that kind of thing. And through that, I then met a lot more of the dancers and a lot more of the team and built that relationship a little bit more. And then as a result of that, I spent a little bit of time with Coco, who's one of the other principals with Scottish Ballet. And then I actually went backstage with her a couple of months ago. So, you know, it's it's very much, when it comes to that kind of, more commercial side, I would say it's, you have to take a long-term view. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's very short term, it, it, it tends not to go anywhere, but if you kind of have faith and you shoot a lot, <laughs> that's the other thing. I shoot a hell of a lot, not just, uh, not just dance and not just with Beth. Like I, I shoot a lot and I put a lot of things out there. So, you know, eventually things are going to come back if you kind of hedge your bets a little bit. Um, so yeah, obviously doing this was very different. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was great. I wrote, this was a really fun couple of days. Um, and then finally, yeah, this is the, this is as commercial as it gets. So this is um, my campaign with Move Dancewear. Let's see, we shot this in August last year. Um, For something like that, I wouldn't be comfortable using because we worked together so much, I knew it was a perfect collaboration to work with Drew on that as well. So that's how the whole kind of trust and the story, nothing was wasted before, nothing, no work we did together, no trundling up mountains, no, um, I don't know, six hour shoots, nothing was wasted because the whole story keeps evolving and collaborating and then um, has gone into commercial work. Yeah, exactly. And I think it gives our commercial work a really good kind of backstory and yeah, an intimacy that you wouldn't necessarily get in, in other commercial work. Um, if you want to know more about this particular shoot, you can go to my website and I wrote a long blog post about this and it's got all that technical info that I know dance photographers love and lighting brands and what kind of stands you use and all that kind of thing. Um, quick side note, actually, whilst we're on this, because I can see you smiling, Ron, um, if you have $2,000 lights, please put them on C stands or decent stands. Don't put your really expensive lights on terrible cheap stands. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, I've, gone, I've gone off script, but uh, yeah, essentially Move approached you first for this, Beth. Is that right? Or have I got that mixed up? 
Um, yeah, so this is um, a dance, um, a dance by a company. Um, again, with my uh, kind of branching out was something that I would love to do. And this is leading on to something even further just from this initial collection. So I just knew that if it was going to be a Scottish ballet, Drew knew the, the place, I felt extremely comfortable with him. I knew that I would get the pictures that would get approved because we've, I'd already had so many approved shots. Um, and because the, the, the company wanted to work with myself, it was a, it was a, a no-brainer, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there we go. I mean, yeah, it was great. I mean, I have to say, yeah, like we did use a lot of the shots that we'd taken previously as kind of jumping off points for uh, some of the images that we ended up shooting. And I, I've written here in my notes, but this is, this is true. It is basically the dream. Like you're shooting in a state of the art studio with like a world-class dancer and a, and a top flight makeup artist and an amazing team and the best equipment that money can buy. And it really doesn't get better than that, man. There we go. I thought I'd include a couple of these. These are nice. This was a really fun day. I mean, good grief, it was stressful, but that's because I <laughs> fret on set sometimes when maybe I need to just relax. But us too, like working with a bigger team, we're normally used to working together. So we right. um, we had to adapt for that as well. We, we had to keep remembering this is what the kind of branding for this is. Um, yes. And although we could keep our own personal feelings with the pictures, um, which I think gives, gives them strength. And um, it's not just about this is a pretty picture, there's something behind it as well. Yeah, for sure. Are, 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 hey Beth, are you able to pick up on Drew when he said he was stressful on that? He was oh, stressed. Yeah. That day. Are you able to pick up on that? Do you help him through the process as well? Yeah, and I think um, he could, he knows when I'm not on, if that's, I don't know, the, the kind of the term you use, or he's like, you can push it on more, you can. Um, you can um yeah give that image some some more power or some more strength or tone it down so i think it's something that we just take pride and we just have a little chat with each other and see check in and see where we are and see if there's um yeah work for solutions not the problems yeah it's like being in a band like you have to like listen to the other people and like do you know what i mean and then it's got to the point now where it is nods and winks like the Jimi hendrix experience Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you guys have basically spoken through all my notes. So for this, but yeah, basically it's just slightly different because you're working to a client's brief and you can't just do whatever you want to do. Um, which, which is really fun actually, because having a little bit of structure can sometimes be really helpful. Um, as I say, if you go to my website, it's all on there. So, uh, drewforsyth.com if you're interested. Uh, let's see. So finally, what's next for me and Beth? We, before COVID, we had uh, kind of made tentative plans for me to come north in the summer. But I kind of don't really know where we're up to with that. <laughs> and Beth didn't know I was about to say that either. So, you know, <laughs> but like, who knows, basically. We have some kind of irons in the fire, right? So before COVID, we had um, some things lined up with Visit Scotland and um, the lovely images we've done. Um, I was taking on an ambassadorship with them. So all things like that, just from our first maybe pictures from Arthur C, have led to huge companies and even talking, wouldn't it be great if they were on, um, you know, uh, on airports and things when people came in. Um, leading on from that, we've got some more work with Move, developing my own range collaborating with Drew on the backstory of that and how to get um, more images and yeah, some more backstage things with each production. Great. Well, this is great news for me. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course. Um, great. So does anyone have any questions at that point? Let me see. I don't see anything coming through right now. Oh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, someone's, uh, that's right. Yeah, great, cool. Okay, well, unless anyone has anything they wanna ask, but yeah, Ron, just jump in anytime. It's fine. Let's see. Oh, this is a blank slide. Good one. Okay. <laughs> right, so here we are. So this is the stuff that applies to you guys now. I'm sure you're sick of hearing about um, 
how great I am and how great Beth is, you want to know about how you can do it for yourself. So let's see why. Why is always a good one, I think. What to look for in a creative partnership, foundations of a good working relationship, approaching a dancer, it's top tips. So yeah, I, also, I put in brackets, that's all well and good, Drew, but what about me? So let me, answer, let me get to that. So I wanna talk about why first. Um, forming a creative partnership like this for me has, I have to say, has been one of the most creatively fulfilling experiences of my career. Um, and there really isn't a downside, you know, this isn't an exclusive thing and I only shoot with Beth and, you know, I don't do any other photography, you know, I still do all of my other stuff and I still whatever, but having that person to go back to and grow with is, is, is really uh, amazing. Like it's thrilling to work with someone who shares your vision in that way and you're kind of working together on something. I mean, it's also, it's grown my network exponentially. It's opened doors that were previously completely welded shut. You know, Beth told me one time that the only other photographer that goes backstage with them is the one that shoots for the times. Do you know what I mean? Like having this kind of relationship is also like, it's a safe space to experiment and try things out. It's enabled me to expand my commercial portfolio and, and it's, it's great to make great work. You know, like it's great. To, it feels good to create great images, you know, that are like I, you know, and I post this stuff sometimes it's three, four, five years ago as like a little archive or whatever. And, you, and I, you know, sometimes I look back into the archive and I see this stuff. and I'm like, God, yeah, this is that was a fun day out, man. <laughs> like, this is really good stuff. So, yeah, I hope that kind of answers your question as to why. Um, so let's see, I've, then my next thing is what to look for in a creative partnership. Basically like what were my criteria? Like what, what was I looking for? And for me, I was looking for someone who was incredibly talented, obviously, an experienced dancer and someone that would help me grow as well. Like I don't, uh, well, actually this isn't in my notes, but I am gonna say it anyway, working with Beth, like we're working with someone like Beth, who is at the top of a game, you know, and has been at the top of a game for five, six, seven, ten years. It drags you by the scruff of the neck up to the next level. Do you know what I mean? Like when I show up on set with a camera, like, like you better be ready because Beth isn't going to give anything other than 150 percent. And then is going to make you feel bad when you tell her that you had a McDonald's breakfast. You know what I mean? Like my diet now is much better because of Beth and I exercise a lot more. Um, so yeah, I don't have a dance background. Um, and one of the brilliant things that Beth is able to do is translate my photography brain into dance. So for example, if I say something like, okay, I, I want this to be, I want this movement or these series of movements to be really emotive and introspective. Beth can work with that and take that direction rather than me saying, okay, can you do a rond de jambe or a grand jeté over there in front of that mountain? Like it's a lot more, um, like it's, it starts conceptually in my brain and then having someone as talented as Beth to kind of translate that into movement um, is, is really, really valuable. Um, the, yeah, let's see. Next thing I want to talk about, yeah, the key. The key <laughs> basically is trust. Like you have to trust one another and work together in order to create work and create work in a safe, creative, supportive environment. You're a team and you have to be a team and you're collaborating. It's not just like, I'm going to take photos of you. Like it's a collaborate, like you're working together. And you have to be a team because at some point you're going to, you bump up against things and you have to overcome obstacles. And that doesn't happen if you're working at cross purposes. Like you have to share a creative vision and you have to share the same goals and, and you both have to be working towards the, the, the same thing. Um, it has to be collaborative and the relationship can't be one sided. And if you want something other than a one off shoot, you have to work at that relationship and support the other person and listen. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. 
one thing that's a little bit more personal that I wanted to speak about is just briefly mention um, is that when you're working with a dancer at the top of their field, you also have to trust that they wouldn't be in that room if they didn't believe in you. Like, it, like these dancers at this level are incredibly busy. They get hundreds of uh, inquiries or offers to work with this person or whatever. If they choose you and they say yes, like try not to second guess yourself is what I'm saying. Like I'm very guilty of that. And sometimes, you know, I get a little bit insecure or whatever. So yeah, believe in yourself, Drew. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> so hey, there hey, Drew. Yes. For just a moment, can we go back to those shots that mm -hmm. you did just a few moments ago with that lake there behind? Which uh, you were. Yeah, to no, those two right there. And, and, and Beth, I'm kind of curious, you know, like, like Drew kind of described, you know, his thought process and, and, and the way he talked to you, but, but what's going on? from your end of things when he's talking to you, okay, this is the shot I want. I want the slope of the hills coming down the lake. And, you know, how, how do you come into play in forming the shot as well then? So both of us have always had a thing about water. And so that's why this also appealed to us. I run every morning down the River Clyde in Glasgow. And, and I'm from a seaside town and the feeling of that Kind of relaxation and something that water brings and also does to the body really fascinates me we couldn't get in the water so this is the closest best thing for now yeah um, for working on it <laughs> also there's something about you know the ballets of swan lake where you have these creatures on the water and then underneath you have their legs going like the classes to keep afloat in this picture i am stood looking like stillness but every single muscle and my heart is pumping my veins are full i am sinewed to keep that pose and even though it looks like kind of the softness of the hands the dress flowing there's something that um really builds it together with the uh, the environment that that i'm in the coldness i'm in the feeling of pressure on the face that i can use my body within the kind of crevices of the hills and um, just create something beautiful even if maybe i was feeling really strained at the time sometimes you get moments where the wind can just blow or you can um i don't know you, you just feel like you have it and, it and in that moment i did i was feeling strong and um yeah serene <laughs> good it comes across well i love it mm. And then this one here, now, what's going on with this one here for you? So when we were looking at the backdrop as well, we were looking at something that could um, match alongside it. Correct me if I'm wrong, Drew. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, all yeah. my non-photography jargon and words coming out. But, um, so to have this also, you've got the power in, in the background, so to have a jump along um, against it is something that looks really beautiful. And just to show the strength of dance as well, I think it's always nice to be able to show the, the kind of the stretch in the foot, the, the athleticism in the legs, and then you've got that kind of flowing with the hair going up. Yeah, one of the reasons we, we shot these in Glencoe, which is, you know, one of the most Scottish places you can think of. <laughs> and I really wanted to take Beth to, you know, the most kind of, yeah, the, the highlands of Scotland. And it, and it is breathtaking. When you're there, it, it really is breathtaking. Like, and I don't know if you remember this, Beth, but like sometimes when we're shooting or whatever, I will just take a moment and just go, oh, this is pretty amazing. You know what I mean? I like to appreciate the moment. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see. These are some more backstage ones. Um, let's see bits i'm getting towards the end of the end now um but yeah the other th other things to think about when you're collaborating with a dancer or whatever is pretty obvious it's 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 basic stuff it's politeness it's professionalism safeguarding you know um and actual safety when you're shooting and you know what i mean this is kind of basic stuff but it's nice to remind people i think sometimes um okay 
let's talk about approaching a dancer. Um, and I'm going to throw to you both in a, in a moment, just to give you a bit of warning. Um, but yeah, the be my, in my experience, the best way to approach a dancer is to get someone else to do it for you. And a personal recommendation coming from another dancer or an artistic director is a million times more valuable than me doing it. Um, but what if you can't do that? What if you've got no mutual friends, no contacts, you've got no network, nothing? Well, I always start with social media, obviously. Um, find, the, find the person that you want to collaborate with on a platform that they're active on. Interact with them. If they're doing a live Q&A, ask a Q. Offer an A. <laughs> Comment on their posts, reply to tweets. If they ask a question, give thoughtful answer. And then suddenly, like you build up a bit of a relationship like that and then you're not just a stranger asking them. Obviously there's other stuff like your own profile and you know, keeping it relatively professional or whatever. I would say, because some people at this point would say, you know, no one wants to see pictures of you on a night out or whatever. But I would say how you present yourself in online is a whole thing, but just remember that everyone can see that stuff, I would say. Um, let's see. Finally, if none of that stuff works, you can just DM someone. That's the beauty of, of the kind of democracy now that we've been given through Instagram and social media. And there is a, there is, you know, a chance that that person will get back to you. Um, yeah, Beth, maybe you could offer some, insight as to what your kind of criteria or what like a dancer's criteria are and maybe kind of yeah sure yeah I like think, a, yeah. Um, a lot of it is also on what picture and what you're wanting to produce so if there's an idea that you want to produce a picture to wow your friends or to something that's gonna um jump out at you you're going to look for a, a a different type of photographer that, that uses that. Or if you're wanting a more personal approach or something to have a story to it, you're also, then you will use someone else. So I think when I get messages through, I always think about selfishly, where, where, where do I fit into this? Where do I fit into this person? And um, what will it bring the both of us? So I like testing myself, um, so in a kind of collaborative way that you learn a lot about yourself from working with other people. And then um, when I get, do other shoots, you know, I recognize things that maybe I, I do with Drew and then I don't do with other people. And um, especially if it's kind of more of a fashion shoot, they're very different um, to what I'm, I'm used to, kind of doing more um, emotional approach. Professionalism is the key. It's something that in the beginning, it, it is like a, a business um, transaction. And you have to remember that the dancer is putting themselves back into a vulnerable position where they're giving you time, maybe on their own, maybe at their most kind of vulnerable um, point of, of showing their body, of giving you positions, um, maybe feeling nervous of not knowing what to do. So then you kind of have to take the lead. But it's recognizing that if a photographer starts directing me all the time, I'm thinking I have no personal um, touch in this. So this isn't me, this, this picture that, this photo that will go out, I don't feel comfortable with. But then if it's something like, oh, that was great, what did you do just then? Or can you adapt that? Can you make that stronger? Can you soften that? Then it becomes a collaboration. Because then you're, you're working together and it's not, just one-sided um, so I guess that's probably what I would look at as well in, in future work and also recommendations like Drew said um, other principal dancers who have they used where have their journey come from um, photographers which are maybe starting out and we can see that they have an eye for something then you, you know you, like you want to help or you feel that um, you could learn something from them. So, yeah, all of that. But social media in this world, it's, it is the way to go for kind of messages. But then if there's something which is big, I know I'm going to get it through the company and that will be, they've gone out to source that to come in. So um, it's more of a personal approach when anything comes on social media. Does that answer the question? Pretty good. 
Pretty good answer, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just to kind of sum up then, that's it. I mean, that's it really. Like, you know, I didn't, when I started this journey, I didn't think for a second that it would lead to all these amazing experiences that we've had. Um, you know, no one wants to commit to 12 shoots with someone that they don't know. <laughs> so, you know, we, the first couple of projects, we were just kind of feeling each other out to see what would work and what didn't work. And then, yeah, like it was very organic, like, and it just kind of grew naturally, I would say. Um, oh yeah, finally, just um, a couple of top tips, one sentence things, like under promise and over deliver, that's pretty basic, right? But like, yeah, like don't promise the world. Face-to-face <laughs> um, -face meetings are always so much better than phone calls, I think, obviously notwithstanding our current situation. Um, doing your research um, and like really getting to know the person that you're messaging, I think is really, really important. Um, one thing actually um, that I did want to mention is that don't, don't force it. So like if you reach out to someone and they don't get back to you, you know, remember that every contact leaves a trace. So like if you, if you kind of are really pushy and you, you know, you don't hear back anything, like sometimes you just have to let things go. And like if, if, if your career expands and, you know, you get to know more people and you do more shoots or whatever, eventually you're probably going to bump into that person. You know, I've, I've had it where I've been shooting rehearsals for companies and a dancer's come up to me and go, oh my God, you're Drew. I'm so sorry, I didn't get back to your DM because I was doing, and you're like, oh, I think I DM'd you about four years ago. <laughs> so, you know, like, don't think, don't take things really personally and yeah, just relax and let things kind of, let things happen, I would say. So um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's about it. Like you can follow me on, and Beth on Instagram. I'm underscore Drew Forsyth and Beth is at Bethany King Zagana. It's both in our little names on here. And uh, yeah, we're kind of happy to take some questions. How was that? That was awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad. Okay, uh, Beth, do you have any final words for us? Um, well, that was lovely seeing, um, seeing our journey. And I think that hopefully by showing what this um relationship can do with the photographer and the um the muse or the, the dancer whoever the photographing really does make a difference and i'm constantly looking at dance photography and seeing things and i um i, I think you can tell when, when when something has um that emotional response and relationship to the to the camera All right. Pretty good. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for being a part of this. And um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. We'll see everybody later. Awesome. Bye. <laughs>